Before we get into today's show, if you have faith in Alabama head coach Kalen DeBoer, then subscribe. We are not going anywhere just because Nick Saban left. If you're not going anywhere either, then join us for more free Alabama football YouTube videos. Shocker, we're spending more time in the transfer portal on today's video. Whomst among us could have seen that? Uh, yesterday evening, uh, Washington wide receiver Jimmy Bernard committing to Alabama after he was kind of the number four receiver last year for the Huskies. A chance to play a potentially bigger role for Alabama in a wide receiver room that is undergoing plenty of change this offseason. Last year, with a decent amount of these coming after injuries happened to other receivers for a short period of time and in some other games that got a little bit out of hand, Bernard had 34 catches, 419 yards, 12.3 yards per catch, by the way, two touchdowns. Bernard knows the offense. That actually does give him a decent leg up on some of the other Bama wide receivers who are going to be learning a bunch of new stuff, but he's also more of a veteran, so you can count on him to help teach others as well. This wide receiver room is going to look different for Alabama. Uh, Jermaine Burton's gone. The returning guys here are Kendrick Law, who kind of did some fun Debo-esque Samuel stuff at times. Uh, Debo Samuel-esque stuff, excuse me, for the Crimson Tide. Jalen Elliott, some big plays. Kobe Prentice is actually your leading returning receiver because your other top players all left. Bernard will compete for those roles. Others will compete. Maybe Emmanuel Henderson gets going a little bit. Some freshmen coming in as well that could carve out a big role. So kind of like last year, but even with, with less experience, there's a lot of uncertainty uh, with this Alabama wide receiver room. Again, Prentice, your leading receiver, that was 18 catches. You know, Law and Hale had 20 combined for a decent amount of production, to be fair. Big explosive plays involved there. This is a new look wide receiving core, and there will be plenty of open competition to earn those jobs. Had Bernard gone back to Washington, especially if, uh, if DeBoer was still there, he would have been their number one wide receiver. So I would not be surprised whether it's, you know, 2, 2A, two 1B, one, 1. I think you will see a big role for Bernard for the Huskies or for Alabama after the transfer from the Washington Huskies. Who do you think will be Alabama's number one wide receiver? in 2024 we'll make this the pin comment on today's video so if the ad comes here on youtube take advantage of it a lot of ways you can go i think freshmen even on the table for this one sound off for me especially if the ad comes here on youtube so recapping some of this portal movement guys coming in here uh, austin mack who we've mentioned previously is going to be a uh, future quarterback option whenever milrow calls it a career parker brailsford the center is I think going to be a day one starter, I think pretty clearly. Bernard has a very good chance of starting. Damani Jackson, assuming he does not re-enter, which is, of course, still in the cards here. Uh, the cornerback who picked Bama over Michigan, uh, he is set to be a likely starter. Nikhil Bertrand, I don't think, ends up being a starter. I think that's more of a depth piece along the offensive line. But who knows? Left tackle is a massive uncertainty. LT Overton maybe ends up as a starter. Uh, or at least maybe a key rotation piece for Alabama as they shuffle the defensive staff uh, with Nick Saban and his, comp and his crew now gone. So anywhere from probably three to five starters, depending on the trench players in Bertrand and Overton with, I think, pretty clearly Brailsford, Bernard playing enough snaps to justify a starter, even if they're rotation at wide receiver, and Jackson most likely as well. Some more targets then for the Crimson Tide in both recruiting and in the portal. Jabbar Muhammad, who is visiting Oregon next up here. Corners a need. You'd love to get him. Uh, he also wants some, some stability. To be honest, I think Oregon would offer a little bit more from that perspective. Ryan Williams, the five-star receiver. Texas and Auburn still in the running there, along with Alabama. We'll know that later in February. And four-star edge Noah Carter, who certainly seems likely to end up being a Bama commit, but we'll have to continue to wait and see on that front. We will have you guys covered here at the Alabama Football Report. If you want free videos, if you want updates, shorts as well, hit that sub button, youtube.com slash at Roll Tide TV. So now with the dust starting to settle, will there be any more transfers for the Crimson Tide? Uh, the portal is directly impacted by the academic calendar and vice versa, which is why the portal opens in the middle of these teams' CFP runs and closes before then. It, I don't like that part, but it is how it is. Last day to fully withdraw from classes was on January 17th. To a certain extent, 
I think that was the real deadline for Alabama players, although the guys who are going to go in the portal are going to be angling for NFL careers. So to a certain extent, not as impactful. Plus there is the spring window. I do want to make note of that. And I guarantee you more players will go in the portal across college football because that's how this works. Here's what Kalen DeBoer said on the 30-day transfer window. I was just through this two years ago, and this is a much better situation than even that one was with a number of players leaving. You just stay your course and roll up your sleeves, like I said earlier. There's such a great group of leaders here in this program that want to uphold the standard of Alabama football, and they are sticking together. And we want those guys that want to be here. They're working through all the noise that's out there. And I just couldn't be more proud of them sticking together, them being intentional on communication with themselves and trying to keep it tight and keep it together. A lot of these guys, they came here to leave a legacy, to build on a legacy, but also leave a legacy. And they look at it as, as their job's not done. There's unfinished business with what they accomplished, whether it's this year or the years past. So I'm looking forward to really locking arms as a team as a staff, and continue to just work with the guys that are here. I feel really like we're in a great spot. We've just got to stay the course. I think all things considered, DeBoer's done a really great job keeping guys. I mean, he was only tired, hired 10 days ago, and it feels like it's been, a, been two months, right? With all the, the chaos that has gone on so far. There were several significant losses, but the mass exodus that... I think could have been in the cards for Alabama, didn't really come to fruition. They lost plenty of players due to graduation. There were already guys in the portal. And yes, they did lose a few more pieces. But it's not the sky is falling doom scenario, even though when they all kind of come out one by one, it makes it feel that way. The big losses were Caleb Downs and Caden Proctor. And to a, and make no mistake, that hurts. That is a sizable, both of them, sizable, massive losses two cornerstones of your program, but it could be a lot worse. You know, you could have lost guys like, including but not limited to, Jalen Milrow, Justice Haynes, Malachi Moore, and Daniel's going to change their minds and gone pro. A lot of, uh, you know, uh, Jaden Roberts, et cetera. A lot, of, uh, a lot of guys could have left, Tyler Booker and more. They didn't. They chose to stay and ride it out with the Crimson Tide despite what is Frankly, the most tumultuous period that I think many remember for Alabama, because last time was when Saban first took over. I don't think many programs would be in this caliber of a spot. And it's not even like a home run spot, but it could have been oh, oh so much worse. This is still a talented roster. It is not, a, a, I think, a championship favorite roster. I don't think that's fair. I think guys like teams, I mean, Ohio State has thrown like, I think the report was $15 million this year for NIL. Ought to have an okay quarterback. It's not as good as Jalen Milrow, by the way. The coaching staff is solid. And this, this is a period of transition. It's not a period of rebuilding, but it's a period of transition. And as you stabilize yourself after all the chaos and movements coming in, now DeBoer can start grinding. He can start working his way through adding more players via the portal. He can start making his way through. I mean, it's not like you're, you know, let me go back to the point, by the way. It's not like you're just lacking scholarship players altogether. You know, this is not Kansas can't fill a roster like they do with Charlie Weiss. It's not, it's not where they're at. You know, the 2025 class, I know it's in dire straits right now. It's going to get better. Junior day is coming up here on February 3rd. It's a great day to get those guys in, and I think you will see players recommit to Alabama. Now, maybe not. Maybe it's only one or two, but DeBoer, if, they, if he wants those guys, will get his chance to have that pitch. And those players committed, A, in large part because of Nick Saban, but also to Alabama. And they will have, the, the, the staff will have that chance to get back on track. Is it going to be a consensus top two class like it was every single season Nick Saban was here? No. It's going to be different. It's never going to be as good as it was. But it can still be good. And although the expectations are unbelievably borderline and possibly high, Bama can still have success, just not going to be the same Saban dynasty that it once was. So before we go, predict Bama's record this upcoming season. I think 10 wins still very much in the cards, although that SEC is going to be tough. We'll spend time on that here, of course, as well. Get those record predictions in for me in the comments.